audio jungle. What's up? What's up? What's up, everybody? Oh my gosh, I can't. Yo, this is about to be an awesome episode today on the podcast, yo. Man, I got my boy Sebastian Joseph, special guest on today. What's up, Sebastian? What's good, Q? How you doing, brother? Thanks for having me on this awesome podcast. I appreciate you coming on, bro. Man, it's been a minute since we, you know, talked to each other um, via FaceTime, but this is awesome, bro. Like, yeah. me and Sebastian at Rutgers crushing it in the game. Uh-huh. Roommates, um, roommates, 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 <laughs> <laughs> athletes in action, man. Yeah, yeah, we did it all, man. And, uh, it's amazing, man, you know, just to be part of your journey and, you know, seeing your journey and how amazing it's been and from football to your entrepreneurship, bro, it's truly motivational and uh, I appreciate you, dog. I appreciate you, brother. Hey, man, this is, it's, it's awesome to see you, Komoko freaking man everybody just like crushing it being successful man like mm-hmm. it's a blessing it, it is bless, it man. is, it is blessing. Truly, truly a blessing truly a blessing god is good and we're just lucky you know just to have an amazing guy like we do man so yeah that's awesome so my guy sebastian plays for the los angeles rams you guys just got a brand new stadium that's yes. done right? It's done. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still, it's still at the works, but it should be done. Yeah, by September first, first game, Dallas Cowboys. Baby. Woo! Can't <laughs> mess them up. I already know it, man. <laughs> um, but bro, you just got what? What, what just happened a couple days ago? Well, a week ago? What happened? Oh yeah, man. You got, your boy, your boy Bash got engaged. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Wish I could hit you an applause button or something. <laughs> <laughs> nah, thanks, bro. I appreciate That's what's it. What's up, man? man? I got I lucky. Just... Yeah, I got lucky, bro. I found. Um, uh, mm. I got I got lucky. I got lucky, man. Mm. I got a really great girl that understands me and uh, that just wants truly the best for me and understands me, man. You know, it's hard to come by. You know, mm. relationships, man. Like, and you guys been together since college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. funny. After you graduated, after you graduated, that's when we started dating. Or yeah. actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or it was actually, yeah, it was like your last year. That's when we started okay. dating. Yeah. Your yeah. last year. Yeah. In a minute. So through that process, like, relationships take time. And like, For sure. I learned my own mind. Like, what's the special sauce to relationships that everybody should know um, to have a successful relationship? I think, this, honestly, the special sauce to relationships is just um empathy like just being able to like listen to someone talk listen to your partner talk and like not be so quick to judge or not even judge you put your input like sometimes your partner just needs someone just an ear just to listen to you know and uh you know us as like athletes you know we always think we got the answer sometimes and and like you know we play in a sport when it's all about communication so obviously that's very vital to a relationship but sometimes it's helpful just to be able to have to be that ear for this your partner to communicate to you you know and sometimes you don't even need to say anything like just like if they're having a rough day just hearing them vent and just being like hey like listen like listen babe like i feel you that really stinks like i'm sorry to hear that you know and just being able to give them a hug and stuff like that that's probably the biggest thing i really learned and mm. just compromise, man. Just compromise, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, and like another thing is athletes, you know, we're alpha dogs, we're alpha males. So, like, we always, you know, like stuff a certain way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We like certain stuff a certain way. And we like things, doing things our way. But, you know, uh, you find that when you're, like, truly in a relationship and you truly do find someone that's special, someone, like, that it truly is just about compromise. And, and it isn't always necessarily about who's right, you know. Like, it's not about ego. It's just about 
in the bigger picture like is this like is this really worth it you know what i mean like what's like what's like wh- like, wh- like what are we really what's the the conversation here what's the point of the conversation and is it really worth us fighting you know and just right. being able to let that uh let that uh ego just down for that other person so yeah i'd probably say like those are like two things i really learned and uh yeah that's right so i'm engaged <laughs> i guess right <laughs> Hey, real talk. Once you find what it says, it says once you find a good woman, you keep a good woman, man. You find you Amen. find a good woman, you keep a good one. So no, that's powerful, brother. So dive into a little bit about you, like you growing up as a kid to high school yeah. and that whole experience growing up. Explain explain that. Yeah. Okay. From what aspect? From sports and school, everything. Just yeah, you growing up and okay. and you know you were born. Were you born in PA or were you born? I was so I was born in Jersey. I was born in New Jersey, um, raised in Pennsylvania, and then I went back to school at Rutgers. Obviously, um, growing up, you know, I have my family. I have uh, two Haitian American parents, so I'm a first generation. I'm a first generation child, um, and you know, they just really instilled in me discipline and school and all those things. You know, that really helped me honestly become successful and be where I am today. Um, a lot of credit goes to my parents, man. Even though they were tough on me, you know, the butt whippings always worked, man. And and you know, and you know, like it's crazy because you know, there's times like I, I look back, like in high school, and everyone was like going out and like having a good time. Like I wouldn't be going out and having a good time. Like it's funny, like I even laugh about it with my friends, like now that like I know from high school, like they're like, "Yo, Badger, you never went out, like you know, what I'm you never were out, like I never see you out. Like when you came out, it was like a." A rare occasion that obviously, right. um, you know, I was blessed enough to earn a scholarship. Um, I, it was so funny. I actually didn't like Rutgers at first. I didn't like Rutgers. <laughs> I wanted to go to like Penn State, and uh, but they wanted me to play O line, so I was like, hell no, I'm not going there. And then Maryland was just too. And then Maryland, I really liked Maryland, but Maryland was just too far. I wanted to be close to my friends and family. Right. That's why I ultimately picked Rutgers because the one it was close to home two they were doing so well at the time at the time they were like ranked they were ranked nationally that year um they were they played Teddy you guys played Teddy Bridgewater in the in the Big East Championship to go to the Orange Bowl like y'all were hot so I was like and you were going to the Big Ten so I was like you know what this is an up-and-coming program why not go here and it's close to home my family can see me play and we're going to the Big Ten to be big time football mm. so that's why I chose Rutgers. Obviously, went to Rutgers. Met awesome guys like you um, and Komoko and whatnot. Oh, uh, and just honestly, obviously, you know, a lot of trials and tribulations through Rutgers because you know, as a college athlete, you go mm-hmm. there and like everyone is really good. Everyone's really strong. Everyone's really fast. So you know, I just kind of had to keep my head down and just keep working. You know, I had to humble myself. Um, keep working, keep grinding. Obviously, I had to dive in my faith a lot. Dive in my faith. I was able to really dive in my faith at Rutgers and really get in touch with God. Like, and I always was in touch. You know, I was raised Catholic even as a kid. But you know, being raised with your parents is kind of one thing. But then being on your own and having that relationship, you know, is another thing. If that makes sense. So I was really able to dive in that aspect. And uh, it's crazy to think like. Uh, three years passed I ended up being like a three year starter and then boom I just got drafted by the grace of God by the Rams and and then I was to the Super Bowl the next year the following year that was yeah that was like yo <laughs> Insane, <laughs> Super Bowl. I went from That's drafted to the Super Bowl then to starting this year um, the next year then after the Super Bowl year I started this year and had a mm. great year and you know man it's all it's all glory to God, really, man. Like, it, it really is. And it's just crazy to think, you know, um, how all those steps and all the people along the way really helped me become who I am and get and got me to where I am right now. So, and I'm engaged. So, it's, you know, it's a blessing. You know, it's really just God's work and all glory goes to him. Yeah, man. It's, it's. It is it like when you, when you just give it to God, like you give it all, you give him all yourself and you, constantly just go out day in day out and just focus mm-hmm. like you see him just unveil so many things to you and sure. it's crazy yeah, it, is, like, it is and that's the thing i feel like you always understood too like um like it's, it's not necessarily like yes everyone like like faith like your faith with god is and should be great and it's and it's like a relationship like any other relationship you know your relationship with god is like any other relationship that you have with anyone here 
on earth. But the thing is, it's not just having the faith in God, but it's also going out and getting it as well. You know, it's a mixture of both. So like kudos to you, man, because, you know, you know, you were also a great example of what hard work and and having great faith in the man above and also applying yourself and like grinding day in and day out. So, yeah, kudos to you, man. Appreciate you, dog. Wow, I appreciate you, brother, man. Hey, that you having you Kamoko like living together and yo, that that was like this ultimate, you know, team right there, man. We constantly yeah. like encouraging each other. Constantly, had our like little meetings and stuff, talking about for just sure, like, for sure, for sure, man. Then, um, I mean, except, except the one time, I mean, Kamoko had to he invited. He said, "Oh, we're gonna have invite twenty people over." It was two hundred <laughs> people. <laughs> remember that? <laughs> remember that? We had a party. Oh my god, man! I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, that party okay. like that thing that party was lit though i think it came, was spewed out the spewed out the the thing in the hallways the police came are you came come on come on go said hey i'm gonna find a few i'm gonna find a few people you know, right? but actually it was lit though it was, that was, was lit, lit. <laughs> was lit. Was i had the speakers going it, it was fun it was speakers, it was funny it was fun it was a good time good stuff man good, good time stuff. I love that. good stuff what was your favorite moment at Rutgers, off the field, on the field. Favorite moment at Rutgers, off the field. Oof, I, I'd probably say graduating. You know, graduated in four years, and I was then I was able to go. Uh, you know, my fifth year, get my ma like, do my masters and work towards that. So I'm like halfway through that. Um, that's off the field. Um, on the field, hmm, I'd probably say that that Michigan game, that Michigan game, your senior year. Yeah, nope. that game was nuts, man. That was amazing. That was amazing, man. That was an amazing game, amazing fight. Uh, and yeah, man, it was just it was all around. It was amazing, man. That was probably my favorite, favorite, favorite moment on the field. That's what's up. I was watching. Uh, was it? They had all the Rutgers top Rutgers games on. I believe mm -hmm. weeks ago. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the Big Ten, and I was like, I saw the Indiana game. I believe it was 2015. That game hurt, but we won. <laughs> that, game, <laughs> that game hurt. The play, I got cut so many times. Oh yeah, game. I remember that game. That game was a man, that game was a freaking dog fight, bro. <laughs> we we clawed our way back in that game. Literally, literally clawed our way back. I was watching that one. I was like, yo, that joint hurt. The play, just looking at it. But yo, man. So I guess. What's something that, like, I guess in your entire life, like from high school to Rutgers, like, what's like something you've been living by, like some type of a quote or go, like what? Okay, okay. <laughs> you know, that's a great question. Um, that nothing's nothing will be given to you. Nothing is given to you, and you got to earn everything. That's kind of like right. my mentality and everything I do. Um, also, another like thing I live by is is uh, is. Uh, you, is that at the end of the day, it's you versus you. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, because that's the craziest thing. Like, people always think, like, it's always me versus this guy. Or, like, you know what I mean? For me to, like, you know, make the team. Or, like, me versus this guy to win a starting job. It really isn't. Like, the biggest battle is always within ourselves, you know? Because, uh, because as human beings, you know, when things don't go our way, we're, we're, we tend, like, just... We tend to like think, you know, the worst of things, you know, it's just human nature, just human nature. So it's kind of like a thing that I've always kind of conditioned myself, a thing that I've always conditioned myself with that, like, at the end of the day, it's nobody else. And and that's kind of the thing that I really picked up at Rutgers, especially like my last year when like a lot of success did come to me. Like, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter about anyone else. It's Sebastian versus Sebastian, you know? And exactly. uh, the moment I kind of like realized that, like, that's what everything kind of came to fruition and obviously my faith my faith in god um but that's that's kind of the things i live by you know no one's gonna give you anything you have to go take it you have to go take it that's my motto and it's, at the end of the day it's you versus you real talk my brother that's real talk right there he's dropping dimes on here folks he dropped nah, like, yeah, because like that's you gotta when you have that focus and you just lock in finally and know which exactly what you want it becomes so real to you. And yeah. that's one important thing, like, I'm gonna show you here. 
you, you see those folk, those papers on the wall? You know? Turn around. See, see that big board right there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With all your goals, right? Goals and vision board. Yeah. Make Always it see it. You want me to tell you something that's so funny? I have, uh, so like all my goals for this year playing are my background on my phone. So like every time I like lock my phone, I see it. I see my goals, like my personal goals of what I want this year, this season. Like, right. I see them, you know what I mean? So every day I wake up, when I go and grind, when I go to the weight, when I go train, I look at that, sh I look at it and it just re, you know, just re-energizes me, re-motivates uh, me when I don't feel like getting up, when I'm tired. Like I see it, I'm like, nah, like this is like, you know what I mean? Like, cause at the end of the day, it's, it's me versus me, Sebastian versus Sebastian. You're your own biggest enemy, man. That's, that's what I think us as human beings feel, always fail to realize. That's true. That's so true, bro. Like, yeah. if you don't constantly remind yourself every day, you will forget. It's easy to. It's easy, mm -hmm. it's easy to go through, like, a time of depression. It's easy to go through these things. But, like, if you don't claw yourself out or, like you said, fight, you fighting for the crumbs, yo. Like, yo, I'm, I'm survival mode. Let us go. Like, yeah. it's, it's nothing else. Like, if you... Nothing you, else. You, Sure. Average or you're trying to be <laughs> for sure, for sure, and and really believe it or not, like what people also fail to realize is like great, like like just being great at whatever it is. It truly is just going the extra mile every day. You know what I mean? Like that's all it no. is. That's what. That's what. And eventually, the greatness like just continues. To, and I call it like stacking bricks. Like. Like you just stack it. Like it was something I heard from like Will Smith. Will Smith say something like really motivational, talking about uh, like every day. If I if I look at it as I'm gonna take this brick, one brick, and and precisely put it on and stack it very precisely. By 30 days, you have a amazing wall with a great amazing foundation. So like that's kind of like that's, that's something I heard like Will say, and that's kind of like the way I live. Like the way I kind of try to my best to live is like listen like. Every day, you just have to focus on stacking one brick as great as you can, going that extra mile as great, going that extra mile one day at a time. Don't think about tomorrow. Don't think about yesterday. Just today, like go that extra mile, and eventually, it just becomes repetition. Rep you know what I mean? And it starts to become a second nature. You're 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 going an extra mile becomes a rep becomes repetition and just second nature, and then you're. You're, you're, you're going an extra mile becomes going an extra two and then going an extra three. You know what I mean? And that's just how it happens. Like, it really is. That's how success happens. Like, and just people don't really, I guess, I guess people really just don't understand that, which is, which is, which, which, which honestly is uh, crazy. But us as athletes, we know it because what we do or, act, you know what I mean? What we do, like, kind of exposes us to it. You know what I mean? And we see what, what that is and what does make people successful so yeah we'll talk right there bro like yo sebastian when you're done playing whatever that is bro you're a motivational speaker bro ah stop stop motivational stop speaker bro. i'm telling you it's it yo you, all right you, you just watch stop it. but you'll be like yo we need you to come out and you know <laughs> um i mean what you just said reminded me uh, i'm reading a book right now i don't know if you checked it out it's called atomic habits okay. by okay. james Ooh, I'm and gonna check that out now. What you say about stacking bricks, right? He talks about the same thing. One percent, get one percent better every day. Mm -hmm. Because you'll get thirty times, uh, thirty times better by the end of that year. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, wow, like, yeah, just get one percent better, and you're gonna like, you're gonna make it to where you gotta go, man. Like, don't worry about it. Don't stress about it. God has you exactly where you are for that one reason. So, yo, that's that's real talk. What you said, though, that's real talk. So, so let's let's talk about yo. I seen some of the stuff on Instagram. What you've been doing with like charities and like t talk about that. Like, cause that's some yeah, bro. That's that's what's up. A lot of folks are just like, oh, I'm home chilling. Um, I'm not gonna yo. You like, I'm home. All right, I'm about to get back. I'm gonna make I'm making impact because I care. Like, why? Like, talk talk about that. Um, yeah, so, so, um, it's interesting that you mentioned that. So, um, with that, with that kind of came the idea of, so, okay, let me think. So I've always been kind of, um, like raised and taught in the aspect of, you know, um, always giving back and, you know, when God blesses you, 
use your blessing to always give back to others. You know what I mean? Like use your blessing that God blesses you with to give on to others, you know, be a blessing, be a blessing with your blessing essentially. And, um, you know, obviously, you know, we're in a real rough time now with the whole coronavirus thing going on, a uh, pandemic going on. And, uh, so my mom, like I said, my mom's a nurse and my dad and my dad works in New York City. Well, if you know, obviously, you know, being from New York, that New York City was hit really hard with the with the COVID-19 um, really bad. My dad works in New York City. He commutes every day. And then my mom um, is a is at home nurse. So she takes care of elderly in her home in her res in, in, in residences in their residences. And um, so I remember like, you know, learning about it and just reading up on it because, you know, it was such a big deal. And like, you know, I didn't want to end up getting sick and, you know, just reading facts about it. I came across like this, um, this video, of, like a nurse being uh, really like essentially a day in the hospital and like all like the all the essentially like issues that they've been having since this whole disease came out, you know, from uh, the the hospital being like overbooked like they like so many people are so sick that like they didn't even have enough room to them having to reuse face masks and gloves because they're running out of supplies to um them just stressing you know i mean just, it's just, it was honestly just mayhem it's crazy it was crazy like an apocalypse in there so you know obviously having my parents you know my dad works in new york my mom being a nurse like i just it really hit home for me and um so i decided that the kindness of my heart um to donate to feeding a hospital um, out here in, in LA and help those nurses. So essentially, I gave like uh, I gave I gave uh, nurses and medical staff um, all meals meals for them and their families. Essentially, for them to bring home, so they did they wouldn't have to worry about you know going home after a rough day of trying to stay you know trying to stay clean from the COVID-19 then you have to go home then take crazy precaution from keep to keep your family safe you know and then make a hot meal you know what I mean like that's insane, yeah, yeah. Like, that's, insane. <laughs> that's insanity you know what I mean like like right. you know what I mean like <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's invisible this is invisible you can't see it <laughs> exactly it's, it's, it's insane like you have to go you have to go home you got to somehow keep your you got to keep yourself clean then you got to go home with touching everything that was infected and then not get your family infected and then go cook like it's crazy so you know I just thought you know why not just you know try to take a load off and just feed them and their family so that's what I did and then um, after that, um, then I had an Instagram live party where I DJed. Obviously, I'm not <laughs> as good as DJ Q Sounds. And, nah, you're gonna get that, and, bro. and we raised a ton of money. We had a bunch of special guests from Jalen Ramsey, um, one of the best corners in the in the in the NFL. Um, Aaron Donald, one of one, the best D linemen in the game right now. Um, to Roger Saffold, one of the best interior guards in the game right now. And Cooper Cup, one of the best wide receivers in the game right now. So, yeah. you know, we had, had special guests, the music, and we were able to raise enough money to feed another hospital in Inglewood. So, uh, so uh, yeah, so I fed. So, obviously, the first time I donated my own money. I donated my own money to feed the hospital. And the second time, you know, I was able to raise an Instagram live quarantine party to, to, to feed another hospital in Inglewood. So, yeah, um, like I said, man, like, it all just goes back to my parents, the way I was raised. And, you know, they always taught me, you know, if you're a blessing, be a blessing on others. So, yeah. Real talk, brother. Man, that's that's what I'm talking about. So when you you make when you make it to even where you are and even before that, too, like doesn't have to. So because some people think, like, oh, yeah, I got to I got to just make it to just give. Then I can give back. You've been doing no, this no, for a minute. No. You've been doing this since when you were younger. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. I've been doing this since I was younger. Um, And, you know, even like with AIA, like. You exactly. and I were in AIA together. Like we've been doing, like, like I don't know. It's just always been in my nature, man. Like, uh, from you know, doing things from church to you know, like just it's always been in my nature. Like I said, I've always been a giving person. Uh, and uh, you know, now like I'm just so blessed with the opportunity I'm in. Like now, obviously, I could do, I could give, in, I could give in a lot bigger ways now, right? But um, it's like I said, it's funny. It's kind of like like I was saying before, like your habits kind of take over. Like with everything you do each and every day, like your daily habits. So like, 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 yeah, like I've always from the jump. I've always been a person that to do like charity events, chair, you know, helping out, help having a helping hand. So like now, 
I'm just in the position where God's blessed me with where I am now, I guess, like you said, like it just led to that moment. Everything I've done kind of led to that moment of me doing what I did. And it kind of like blew up the way it did. I wasn't even expecting it to blow up the way it did. And it just blew up everywhere that I did it. But at the end of the day, it's not about me and what I did. It's more so about the medical heroes, you know, the medical heroes that are putting their lives on the line and keep us safe. So shout out to them, you know. Shout out to them, man. Yeah, my mom's a nurse and stuff as well. And just like, yeah, just, yeah, it's scary. It's scary. Think about it. My grandmother had the COVID-19 and she, but she was, we prayed, we prayed, we prayed. She wasn't, had no uh, type of symptoms. She was good. But wow. well, the grace of God, God is good, man. God is good. All right, time. But for those folks that you know were that were affected by who we are today, you know, everybody pray for them, man. Like make sure you know folks that are that lots of people have lost their lives. It's a it's a blessing um that from what you've done and a testament to you, bro, for continuing to be the example. Be the example. Um and because people, you know, I know you got kids, you know, kids, uh, adults, like people are watching you and that's what they need to see instead of like negativity. So yeah, thank you for um, being that light, brother. No, thank you, brother. I appreciate you, man. Like I said, man, you were a huge influence so in a positive way at Rutgers University, you, JPO, uh, guys like that. So thank you, bro. Thank you. Appreciate you. No problem, bro. Um, Shout out to John Maher for the AIA uh, meeting. Oh, yeah, shout out to John Maher. Yeah. <laughs> Introducing the, yeah, 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 keeping us right with Jesus. Shout out to my yeah. dog. Shout out to John Maher. But I'm trying to think what else, man. This is a good podcast. Um, What's your favorite restaurant? Oh, dang, I mean, I want to say just LA, but I want to do like your hometown. All right, we'll do three LA, uh -huh. Philly, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> That's a tough question, bro. See, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big food guy, you know what I mean? So, I, <laughs> so me saying, like, I don't know if I have a favorite, honestly. Like, I'd have to say, hmm, that's a good question. Okay, so New Jersey. If it was back, if we were back in Jersey, Rutgers days, ooh, what would I have to say? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. I'm going to say Rutgers. I'm going to say Rutgers. So, like, favorite spot I love to eat at Rutgers is Taqueria. Fire spot, fire Mexican, fire spot. Um, if I'm back in PA and I go somewhere, I'd probably say a great spot that I've been, I've been, uh, 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 uh. I'd probably say, honestly, Mama Joe's cooking. That's what I'd probably say. <laughs> my mom, my mother, my mother. No one beats me. I'll beat my mother's cooking, man. I'm telling you right now. No. And, you, and you are a witness. My mom used to bring trays of amazing, delicious food during college. So I'll probably say that. And then um, out here, bro, there's so many great restaurants. But I'd probably say there's this place called Mediterrano in, out in T.O. It's okay. really good. It's really good, bro. I really enjoy it. And they do a great job with their food. Their eggplant parm is each. Fire. On point. So, on point. So, you know, next time you're in TO, let me know so we can hit it. You know, we can hit it. For sure, sure bro. We got, to, we got to do that, man. Um, I was going to say, I had something. I was say, like, I wanted to kind of back put a little bit on when you're talking about your mom and the food in regards to like the Caribbean food now. Mm -hmm. Who's ever listening to just a different type of food? It's, it's not a different. It's, so, it's amazing. It's just nothing to it, nothing compares to it. From the spices or the sauces, like, is it like people will never understand? Like, and people like always laugh at me, like, I'm like, I'm telling you, there's nothing better than my mom's food. But like, how? Like, how is that good? Like, yes, I'm telling you, like, it's the Cari it's the Caribbean, it's the islands, man. The islands, they because they cook with all organic food. First off, all the food's organic because it's from the island, it was no preserve, there's nothing in it, and so it's all fresh. And on top of that, we just have special, you know, like Caribbean spices and just stuff in it that, you know, and, and people just not cute. You know what I'm saying, dog. You know what I'm saying. Hey, I mean, because yeah, my mom's, yeah, Panama is like considered a Caribbean as well. So, yeah, like, yeah. toast on it with like plantains. Yeah, fried toast on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> Nothing like it, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like it, man. Nothing like it. So, to finish off mm -hmm. uh, this because it's been an awesome podcast. 
inspire the folks with a quote that they can leave with for the rest of their lives and be impacted. Okay. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> inspire yeah, with a quote by me, by, by myself. Well, by, it by could me. be by you. It could be one that you utilize all the, on a daily basis, whatever you feel comfortable. Okay. Um, I, I probably, I'm gonna drop, I'm gonna, I'm so I'm gonna say probably what I said earlier about remember it's always you versus you. That's one. The second one I would say, um, when life gives you negatives, always find a way to turn into a positive. Mm -hmm. That's another thing I'd say. And, and remember that greatness is truly just going the extra mile going the extra mile every day right so just you know if you want to be great just continue just to go that extra mile each and every day and eventually those little hat those little things will carry on your extra mile will be will go will go a little further and and each day and then next thing you'll know you'll have this perfectly amazing thing that God's blessed you with, you know? That, those are the three things I'd say. Real talk. Make sure y'all wrote, yeah, you hope you got a pen and you're writing this down right now if you're listening. Ah. <laughs> a little part of the country. Yeah, because like, ever since I started my podcast, bro, I've been having folks from like UK, Thailand, Colombia. I'm like, okay, like if you if you understand the English, let's go. <laughs> nah, let's go, let's go, man. Let's go. It's awesome. It's, awesome. Too, it's good. Yeah, follow, but, follow your boy, follow your boy. <laughs> Yeah, man. So, oh yeah, let let them know your your IG. Let them know whatever. If, like, you got a website and stuff. Like, let, let them oh, yeah, know. Yeah, that. Um, yeah. Follow me at uh, s at, at s i r underscore b a s h underscore a l o t. That's my Instagram handle, and uh, Twitter is s j d underscore five one. That's my Twitter. That's my Twitter. That's, Twitter. <laughs> That's what's up, bro. Um, <laughs> Brother, like this was awesome to have you on here. Like we Definitely. definitely do this again. Probably we're gonna sure. have our, our season three. Hopefully when we do season four, we'll get you back on. Good luck this season. And I'll, and I'll be more prepared. I, I have better I have quotes ready on deck. I have everything ready on deck. Because obviously you know when a year goes by, I'm gonna be reading the stuff, so I'm gonna have some more knowledge to drop for you. But be, nah, for I'm, real I'm, cute. Have knowledge already, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for real cute. Uh, appreciate you, dog. Always been an amazing soul, kind heart, kind soul, amazing heart, uh, hard worker, bro. Like I said, you're a great influence for a guy like me, being a young buck at Rutgers, and obviously being a roommate when you were an older guy and I was a young buck for me and Kamoko. So, you know, seeing your hard work and dedication and everything you did from football to school to, to everything, to your craft. You know, all this translate, all this translate, and now, and as you can see, that's why Q, that's why you're so successful, Q. And uh, I appreciate your dog, and and uh, you know, man, Rutgers brothers for life, dog. You know what it is, man. Love you, dog. God bless, man. Love you too, brother, man. Appreciate you, everybody that's listening. This is the end of the episode. Appreciate y'all listening. Make sure y'all go to the Live Journey podcast on Instagram, Facebook. Sure. Check us out. Check yeah. it out, like, follow, subscribe, all that. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Life Journey Podcast with Quentin Gauze. To find out more and to follow the journey, visit Quentin's Instagram at QGauze or our business page at iron underscore visuals. For full recaps of this show, find us on iTunes and the Google Play Store. Thank you for tuning in.